Hey, what's up everybody? Noah here for Adafruit and today we're going to make an enclosure for the Raspberry Pi Pi TFT 3.5 inch uh, touchscreen. So in this week's project, we put together a portable Raspberry Pi and we're going to talk about how to make a mounting bracket for this little guy here. This is a 3.5 inch Pi TFT. Cool thing about this is it has these little mounting tabs on the sides. And we'll be using these mounting tabs in this project um, so that we can uh, mount to, uh, to the surface of an enclosure through the back. So if you see here, there's no, typically you'd see screws um, fastened in this way. Uh, with this approach, we're doing it through the back here so that you have this nice, uh, flush, non-intrusive uh, surface for your enclosures. So that's pretty cool. We'll also be making the screen cutout and these standoffs and making this whole little thing. This is a really good way to prototype your parts to fit tolerances and, and such. So the first thing you wanna do is get uh, the technical drawings from, uh, from the, the components that you'll be using. So in this case, uh, we have them for you in the learning guide. So the learning guide has all the little mounting tabs and um, the distances between them, which is really great. So in uh, 123D, our CAD program, we'll start off by, um, by making the, uh, the PCB as a reference point and then we'll work around it. So first thing I like to do is to, uh, to make a polyline so that we can make sort of a, um, uh, a, a line on the X and on the Y so we can, so we can quickly um, mirror objects. So I'll just create one there and then one on the side here like that. Okay, now that we have that, we'll create our first object which is um, gonna be the PCB. So I have some notes here of the dimensions of the PCB size. So I'll start with that. So it's going to be 56.5 by 97.5. And the thickness of the PCB is 1.6 mil. Hit enter. And there it is. Okay. Next thing we want to do is make our tabs, our mounting tabs. So they come out to be 6.5 uh, mil by 6.5. And an easy way to do that is, is to, to make it on the corner. So we'll just zoom into the corner here, go up to the primitives, hit box, and then watch when I roll over the edge here. You see that uh, it snaps to the, to the center here. So I'll go to the very corner there and then type in our measurement, 6.5 by 6.5 by 1.6 is the thickness. Hit enter. Now we don't want it to be there exactly. We want it to be uh, flush with this edge. So what we'll do is we'll move it down like that by 3.5. And then over here by 3.25 as well. Too much. Okie dokie. Now if we look at it from, uh, from this angle, you'll see that it's actually on the top surface here. That's because we placed it on top. So all we'll have to do to bring it down is, is, is uh, click on it, highlight it, and hit D on your keyboard. And that drops it straight down to the grid, which is exactly what we want. Uh, so now another thing we'll notice is that um, the, uh, the width of, of the PCB needs to, needs to be reduced because it's the mounting holes that are actually 97.5, not the whole PCB. So what we'll do is we'll grab our mounting tab and then move it back 6.5 mil like that. Okay. Now it's sort of in there. And then we'll hit P on our keyboard. And then we'll click on this edge so that we can pull and press it back by 6.5 mil. Like that. So now it's starting to take shape. We'll also need to do that on this side here. So reduce that by 6.5. 6.5. Look at that. That's a cool little way to do it. So tip there. Okay. Now we have our single mounting tab. Next thing we'll do is we'll create a... Um, Standoff, or actually, let's create the mounting hole first. So it's going to be 1.5 mil. We'll roll over to the top there. And the height doesn't really matter. We'll just put 10 because we're using this to cut a hole out. So we'll click it, hit D on the keyboard, and then we can make our uh, standoff. So to make the standoff, I'll just click on the cylinder, uh, the primitive cylinder, and then position it on top of this hole here, the, the mounting hole area. And it needs to be 2.8. And the height will be uh, 3.6, because that's the height of our, uh, of our screen. So I hit enter. And then uh, you'll see everything sort of floating on top of itself. So again, I'll click on, on, the, on the standoff, hit D on your keyboard to bring it down. And then I will start making some holes here. So 
I'll go ahead and duplicate this because I'm going to use it twice. So just copy and paste on your keyboard just like you did with words. Hit enter. And then I will uh, do a merge or uh, actually a combine some tracks. So I'll go up here in the menu and combine. And then you can use, you can see there's a hotkey to do it. So um, open bracket, close bracket, and then a uh, the little forward slash uh, to intersect. But in this, in this case, we're doing a subtract. So I'll subtract uh, the standoff from the hole like that. And then I'll subtract the mounting tab from the hole. And now we have a straight hole in the way all to the bottom. So then we can move this around. So I'll move this up like that. 1.6. Like that. OK. All right, now we have our little mounting tab all set up and nice. Next thing we'll do is we'll, um, we'll select the two objects, and then we're going to mirror them using uh, the pattern mirror uh, function. So up here, you go to pattern, click on mirror. Now that we already have our solid selected, we'll change the mode to mirror plane, and then we'll select this uh, edge here, the sketch, as the plane. And then you'll see, once you click on it, it duplicates it for you and even gives you a visual of where, uh, what plane it's uh, duplicating it on or mirroring it on. So I'll hit OK. And then since these two are already selected, I'll hold down Shift and click on these objects. Now that I have four of them selected, I can go back up here, hit Pattern, hit Mirror, go to Mirror Plane, and then select uh, the, the X um, axis there, the, the sketch that's on the X axis. And then you get all your, all your duplicated corners. You hit Enter, and now that's starting to look like the PCB. And the last thing we'll do here is uh, we'll merge the, the main PCB with all the little tabs here. So just like that, hit Enter. Now we have our, our shape. OK. The next thing we want to do is make our screen, the actual display. You'll have to measure this out. It's not listed in the tech drawing. So you definitely need to use a caliper if, uh, if you're doing a different component. In this case, I already have it all measured out here. So let's go ahead and make our primitive. Go over here. The width is going to be 55. Nope, the width is 85 by 55.5, and the height of it is 3.6. Yeah, hit Enter. There's our screen. To make it look more like the screen, I can select it and go to Materials, and then I'll change the material to a brush metal. Why not? It's not really brush metal, but it looks um, you know, white, and that's kind of how the screen looks like. OK, so now we have our PCB, our screen, our standoffs. Now we need to make um, our actual cutout um, for the screen. Now, you notice that the screen um, cutout needs to be a little bit different than the actual screen because there's a little bit of bezel. There's a little bit of dead space here, too. So it's a little bit offset. So we'll go ahead and make that now. We'll start off by using another primitive. And we'll go to the center here. And I have it already um, sized out here, measured it with the calipers. So it's going to be 76 on the width by 51.9 on the length. And the thickness, since we're using this shape as a cutout, it doesn't matter how thick it is, as long as it's thick enough to cut through uh, your enclosure. So I'll hit 10, hit Enter. And that's our cutout, looking pretty big here. Um, now we need to have an offset, right? So I need to move this by 2.75 mil uh, to make, a, to make the, the screen only display the pixels and not the whole bezel. So I'll just move it now by 2.75. That. Okay. That's our cutout. And one thing we can do to, to make it easier to see through it is click on material, click on clear glass, and get rid of over, apply overlay so we can see right through it. And that way we can just kind of get an easier way to see through it. Now one of the last things I'll do is to make the actual um, make the actual mounting piece that'll be merged to the standoffs. Because right now this is just the PCB and the screen and the cutout. So I'll go ahead and hide uh, the cutout because it's going to mess with us a little bit. So uh, since it's offset, I need things to be in the center. All this stuff is still here. So I'll go ahead and, and click on box. And before I even apply it, I'll change the material to clear glass so I can see through it. So now I can see through it here. I'll go in the center here. And then we'll, uh, we'll just type in some numbers. I think it, uh, a good one would be probably 80. Now it's too much. Let's try 70. Nope, 60. Yeah, 60 by 100. And then we'll make um, the height of 1.5 mil thick. OK, entered that in there. You see it's perfectly already in place with the, uh, 
with the standoff. So, so I can just merge this now. So I can hit the hotkey for merge and then select the surface and then the, uh, the standoffs there. And then hit enter. Now they're merged in one piece. And I'll just show all the meshes and then subtract the bracket from the screen cutout. And there we go, there's our little bracket. And one last thing I'll do is I'll apply a little bit of fillets uh, to these edges here, or to the corners rather, so that uh, we have a nice rounded corner, giving it a nice aesthetic look. I'll put in something like two. Two mil seems to do good, not too much, not too little. That's pretty much it. Um, you want to save it out at this point so you can reuse this component. But uh, before you export it out to print, we'll need to orient it in the right way. Right now, it won't print so well like that. So we'll hit X on our keyboard until it flips it right. And then D, and now it's flat in the center exactly how we want. So again, this is a really cool way to, uh, to mount uh, this screen to your 3D printed projects. Pretty cool way to do it. Again, check out this week's project if you haven't already. It's a touch pie, a, a portable Raspberry Pi, all the battery and power boost stuff is in there. So really cool. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to hit me up on the comments. And I'll be sure to see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.